Well, new this morning, President Trump is firing back at his former chief strategist, saying Steve Bannon has, quote, lost his mind. That's after unflattering remarks attributed to Bannon surfaced from parts of a new book, Fire and Fury, by author Michael Wolff. Among other things, Bannon accused Donald Trump Jr. of treason for his June 2016 meeting with Russians. Two children abducted in Texas over the weekend have been found safe in Colorado. Police located these 7- and 14-year-old sisters after a deputy spotted a vehicle described in an Amber Alert. Their alleged abductor, Terry Miles, is now in custody. The children's mother was found dead Sunday at the family's home in Round Rock, Texas. Miles rented a room in the house. Here in Billings, as warmer temperatures begin to set in, work is still being done to get residential roads plowed. Crews started plowing last Friday and are making another round to take care of any streets missed the first time around. The city and CMG have been plowing and Knife River has been hauling away the snow. Public Works Director Dave Mumford says there are 1,500 miles of residential streets to plow and about 500 miles on high traffic roads. The city will only haul away the snow plowed on those main thoroughfares. Mumford says this year's new system with contract crews working residential streets seems to work. For our first experiment, I mean, <coughs> I don't know about anybody else, but uh, the amount of calls I got on my vacation last week weren't anywhere near as bad as last year on my vacation. <laughs> We're very pleased for our first time ever trying to use Facebook. Uh, it seemed to work pretty well. I think we we're like awesome. close to 60,000 hits. Mumford expects it will take the rest of the week to clear the snow on the city's busier streets. In other news, after winning a special election by two votes that will allow the ousted Northern Cheyenne Tribal President to finish his term, the Tribal Council is calling Jace Killsback reinstatement troubling. Q2 received a letter from the Tribal Council that accuses Killsback of an unauthorized transfer of money from the tribal-owned Tongue River Lumber Company to himself and others. The letter is signed by Councilmember Benji Headswift and Acting President Conrad Fisher. The letter also says tribal leaders are considering further action. We have not received an official response from Killsback. He is set to resume his position as Tribal President on January 15th and serve out the remainder of his former term through 2020. Back here in Billings, the Downtown Alliance welcomed its new leader, Katie Easton, who had previously worked with Big Sky Economic Development as a project manager, will take over. She'll take over as CEO, a position formerly held by Lisa Harmon. Easton plans to move ahead with the work Harmon and development director Greg Kruger forged over the years. I think Billings is absolutely on the verge of doing amazing things and I think that the downtown is right at the heart of that and it's going to be an integral part of making sure that Billings is poised to take on other communities and really, really be something amazing in Montana and in the country and I think that downtown Billings is right at the heart of that. Easton said a big focus on to leveraging downtown's potential is strengthening TIF funds used as subsidies for redevelopment. Turning now to court news, the battle over a proposed coal export terminal in the state of Washington is headed to federal court. According to The Hill, Lighthouse Resources, based in Salt Lake City, is suing Washington state over its rejection of the company's application to build the Millennium Coal Terminal in Longview, Washington. The proposed facility would be the largest coal export terminal in the United States. But last year, the Washington State Department of Ecology rejected the company's application to build on the Columbia River. In its lawsuit, Lighthouse says the state's action violates the Constitution's Commerce Clause, which gives the federal government sole authority to regulate interstate commerce. Lighthouse operates coal mines in Montana and Wyoming and hopes to build the new terminal to export coal to markets in Japan and South Korea. Meanwhile, at the Yellowstone National Cemetery in Laurel, two deceased Navy veterans received some much-deserved honors. Charles Culp died in 2008 and was placed in the cemetery in October along with his wife. Leroy Olson passed away October 24th. Olson was from South Dakota and Culp was from Hardin. Both lived in Montana at the time of their deaths. They are veterans that honorably served their country and we always like to acknowledge that. 
they, they deserve a military funeral so that they have their honors. And so just because they don't have family or maybe they might be homeless or it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We still need to give them the honors that they deserve for serving their country. Military honors for unattended veterans are held quarterly. Roughly a dozen servicemen or women are honored each year. Now on to business news. Local brewery Thirsty Street is set to expand to Billings West End. The brewery opened its doors on First Avenue North about two years ago. Owners plan to move the brewing operation from downtown to the Canyon Creek Nursery on Billings Far West End. Brewing along with a tap room will take place within the greenhouses at 1730 48th Street West. For those who are fans of the downtown Thirsty Street location, it's not going anywhere. Owners plan to add a kitchen and restaurant and serve their local brews. We'll, we'll be doing uh, gourmet um, sausages, and so we're actually planning on um, grinding and casing those sausages uh, here on site ourselves. And so um, there's a couple of restaurants that uh, my wife Jill and I have had the chance to visit um, that kind of do that. And so you'll find things like you know duck sausage with blackberry jam, um, kind of some of those great combinations with uh, a little more exotic meat than you typically get. So that's what we're looking at doing here. The new zoning was just approved Tuesday by the county commission, so the owners are unsure of the exact timing, but hope to have the transition done by early summer. Another Billings West End business gets a new name, Get Juiced, officially reopened as well paired. The company has been serving juice and smoothies since it opened in 2013. The menu has expanded over the years to also include salads and some hot meals. Owner Nicole Griffith says the rebranding has been in the works for the last year and will allow the business to expand what it offers as well as where. That was the ultimate decision we made was to be able to grow instead of stick to the same. Um, so we were hoping that we would get the second location open this year and that still looks like it's in the works and then after that we'll just keep expanding and um, going from there. But I think right now it's just this is the main focus and when we can grow we will. And as of right now, Griffith tells us a second location has not yet been determined. For our last story this Thursday morning, we ask the question, do you think you could survive an avalanche? Well, check out this video from a snowmobiler's helmet cam. The anxious moments were caught on camera when his machine triggers a slide on Lookout Peak in western Montana. Fortunately, he was wearing an avalanche airbag vest that kept him close to the surface of the slide.